strike a gong and fire off a noonday gun. That tells you where you are, Hong Kong. It's harbor the crossroads of the Orient, with ships at anchor from any country that has trade beyond its own borders, sending and receiving goods and peoples from the six continents of the world. For the tourist, an interesting trip around the harbor to watch ships unload, transferring their cargoes to junks for conveyance to the docks. Hong Kong lives and breathes business. What you see here is the first step ashore in the long and intricate process of commerce and manufacture. The heartbeat of this great seaport whose main reason for existence is the worldwide import and export of merchandise. This, of course, translates into the medium of exchange, popularly known as money. Banking is also important business in Hong Kong. Converting from British pounds, Japanese yen, American dollars, Italian lire, German marks, French francs and all other national currencies into Hong Kong dollars. Millions of them getting ready to go to work in trade and industry. Money for commerce, for manufacturing, money for travel. Destination Hong Kong, one of the world's great ports of call for pleasure-bound travelers. Over to Kai Tak Airport on the Kowloon side, across the harbor from the island of Hong Kong. The airlines of the world use this airstrip, a vortex of world travel, bringing hundreds of thousands of tourists to what is certainly the highlight of any visit to the Orient. Also on the Kowloon side is the fine new ocean terminal with docking space and shopping facilities for the biggest ocean liners in passenger service. One of the first things you do on arrival is exchange your money for Hong Kong dollars. The exchange value often computed on a Chinese abacus. Approximately 16 Hong Kong dollars for every pound sterling, six for a United States dollar. And you'll be glad to know that the Hong Kong dollar is one of the world's most stable currencies, which means increased buying power for your money in this wonderful marketplace for the world's visitors. With your Hong Kong dollar, you pay these hackers to pose for you. Cost to you about one shilling. the younger Chinese generation. Are they awed by the wisdom of Confucius or fascinated by comic books? Not necessary to buy them, just pay a fee to read on the premises. The Hong Kong fortune teller, a shortcut to health, wealth and eternal happiness. Have faith, madam, your destiny foretold at bargain rates. And here's a thoughtful way to dispose of your spare Hong Kong money when you depart. Be it Taoism or Buddhism, the ceremonials of worship also require a modest outlay of money in offering to the divine. You pay for the incense you burn as you call on the celestial spirits. You buy the bamboo sticks you need in the exercise of your spiritual devotions and dedication to the faith of your ancestors. The British Crown Colony of Hong Kong is made up of the island of Hong Kong and its chief city, Victoria, Kowloon across the harbour on the mainland and beyond the rural land area known as the New Territories. 
we're boarding the Star Ferry on the Kowloon side for the short trip across the harbour to Victoria. No waiting. There's a ferry every two minutes during the rush hours. It's a miniature voyage and one of the least expensive across one of the busiest and most fascinating harbours in the world. Unless you live here and it's day-to-day -day routine for you, this is an adventure in water transport. Most of your fellow passengers are Chinese, of course. The Star Ferries are under the command of experts to whom docking is a constant on-time procedure. Over 150,000 residents and visitors cross and recross the harbour every day. And as you watch the people of this bit of Britain in the far Pacific, you'll be as impressed with the well-dressed men and women as you will be with their purpose and progress amidst the constant hustle and industry. As you explore Hong Kong, starting here in the business section of Victoria, you find yourself pleasantly surprised by its fine architecture. From the rather conservative Hong Kong club, to new skyscraper office buildings that stand easy comparison with the finest of New York, London, Milan or where you will. As for the modern style in hotel architecture, Hong Kong proudly claims some of the finest, most luxurious hostelries available for visitors anywhere. We've moved on to the more everyday, mundane side of life in teeming Hong Kong. This is a morning ritual for the housewife, year in and year out the purchase of the family's food. And no babysitters needed to mind the infants at home while Mama attends to the domestic chores of the day. There's no avoiding the platitude of city of contrasts as exemplified in this sequence, shopping in Hong Kong. In this case, tourist shopping. Most of the customers for these items are non-residents of Hong Kong. Welcome visitors, shopping with their new Hong Kong dollars in this world's capital of extra values for every dollar spent. Not spent, really, but invested in the full gamut of knickknacks for the home and personal adornment in a city and in shops where every day is bargain day, with most shops open into the night. Madam, everything you've heard about the wonderful buys in Hong Kong is true. You'll go home with a marvelous wardrobe at unbelievably low prices. The same goes for you, sir, in selection and quality of fabric, in styling, and in the speed with which these master tailors measure, cut, sew and fit your suits. Seriously, most tailors prefer three fittings before you walk out with your new suits. Here again is evidence of the real value of the Hong Kong dollar. 
One tourist site you must not miss is Tiger Balm Garden, a gift to the public of a wealthy Chinese businessman and philanthropist. It's much less fierce than its tiger namesake. More like this benign Buddha, its world-famous jade collection, and its crowning showpiece, this gleaming white pagoda. Another surefire attraction is this cable car that starts just off Queen's Road in Victoria and takes you up and up the extremely steep slope about 1,800 feet to Victoria Peak. Climbing still high for the memorable view of this twin city with its bustling harbour. There it is, a thousand worlds in this one small spot on the map of the Orient. A jigsaw puzzle that interlocks into a single fascinating picture. If there's one spectator sport that's universal, it's certainly horse racing. And of course, you find it in Hong Kong, at the Happy Valley Racecourse. They're on. The going is good here for horse, jockey and just plain punter. By the way, if you're unlucky enough to lose, your losses go to charity. Into the backstretch. And the turn for the home straight. Jockeying for position. Things are warming up. Now heading for home, the plaudits of the crowd and the winner's circle. You'll enjoy sun, sand and the quiet surf of Hong Kong's many fine beaches. This is Repulse Bay, named a century ago after HMS Repulse. Facilities here are the equal of any you'll find along the Mediterranean in Florida or California. And here's something you're not likely to find anywhere else. A colorful Chinese lion dance on the grounds of the Repulse Bay Hotel. choreography may be a little difficult to follow by Western observers, but it seems to involve a disagreement of some sort between the Red Lion and the White Lion. Matters seem to be finally settled between them, however, and in the end, all's well that ends well. Around on the other side of the island of Hong Kong is a sheltered harbour with the familiar name of Aberdeen. The boats that crowd these waters are known as sampans and there is nothing quite like them in the world. These are the boat people. These Hong Kong gondolas are their water taxis. And the fare, very reasonable. It's hard to believe, but many of these Chinese live out their entire lives on these sampans. It's home to them, all that home life means to people the world over. Anything and everything you do at home, from cooking and serving family meals to letter writing and homework for the school children. In their floating villages, they have their own hospitals, schools and places of worship.
Remember those Chinese junks we mentioned earlier? Here's a fishing junk, which also serves as home to one or more Chinese families. We mean that literally, as thoroughly a home to these people as those sampans were to the families we saw at Aberdeen. Meet the patriarch of this particular junk. And here's one of the boat wives hanging out the daily washing. Life aboard a junk is almost completely self-sufficient. And live pigs are just as hungry here as on land. With chores temporarily finished, the family settles down to its meal. With good weather, the deck is the main dining room. This is a way of life to these people, from the old folks through several generations. children have their own special place at mealtime. Have you ever tried eating with chopsticks? We've come ashore to Kowloon's Nathan Road, which is a combination of Fifth Avenue, Piccadilly and the Via Veneto. Then, off the main streets. Let's call it the world of Susie Wong, in fact or fiction. Take your choice and let your imagination do the rest. But for the time being, let's stick to Kowloon 20th century style, the world of wonderful shops and fine hotels. This is the world-renowned Peninsula Hotel, about which a well-known travel writer said, if you sit in its lobby long enough, everybody you ever knew will be sure to walk by. For another side of the Hong Kong coin, Squatters Town, with the influx of immigrants from mainland China. There wasn't any way to house them adequately. But the Crown Colony has done a fine job in providing more and more modern housing developments. The housing problem is a big one. What we see here is at least a partial solution for a population that is still growing. Decent places to live. More and more of them each year. A place to live and a place to learn. Due to shortage of space for almost anything, some of Hong Kong's schools are on the rooftops. Meet one of the teachers. She's eager, intelligent, dedicated. And some of her pupils. Like school children the world over, not exactly eager, but wanting to learn. In Hong Kong, as throughout the Orient, among the majority of the people, food is a very important fact of life. At this school, the noonday meal is supplied by the Lutheran Church. The teaching staff. Halfway across the world, and how many years ago were you singing London Bridge is Falling Down and Ring a Ring a Roses? A small, small world. And here's a completely different world. Nightlife in Hong Kong. Neon lights, shops, restaurants, nightclubs. But this is something different. Chinese opera, unique in setting, flavor, and national tradition. Sit back and enjoy, or at least see, something out of the ordinary. The 
British section of the Kowloon Canton Railway takes us into the new territories. Largely agricultural, the new territories are an important source of food supply for Hong Kong. Actually, this sector of the colony borders Red China, but it is leased to the British by ancient treaty with China till 1997. In terms of contemporary history, this de facto arrangement between communist China and capitalist Hong Kong is something of a political anomaly. But both sides seem satisfied with the mutual benefits. One of the delicacies any tourist will enjoy is Peking duck, a Hong Kong speciality. Here on this duck farm in the new territories is the before. And here in this attractive floating restaurant near Sha Tin, you will enjoy the after, along with other genuine Chinese food. This is the Chinese border at Lok Ma Chau, something most visitors wish to see. There it is, the Colossus of Asia. The actual border is one foot above high water mark on the China side of the river. We've returned to Hong Kong and to Aberdeen in time to witness the annual sea festival. The festivities get underway in the form of a big and colourful street parade and other Chinese displays. Now the famous Dragon Boat Race. They're off. And here's some quick background information. The boats are 80 to 100 feet in length. The crews are tough Chinese fishermen who go into training months before the big event. Oars are pulled to the beat of drum. The approach to the finishing line. It's a close race. Too close for us to name the winner. But as far as we are concerned, they are all winners. Not only the men in the boats, but all who call Hong Kong their home. As well as each and every welcome visitor who journeys to this bright jewel of the Orient, this pearl of the Pacific, this destination, Hong Kong. <laughs>